Hi there, you're watching your trades on ET now with me Snehisha and with me is Priyanka Opal. Well Priyanka, what a market session today and we were expecting a session in the negative today and that is exactly what the street delivered. In fact, on the back of all the geopolitical turmoil that we've been seeing over the course of the weekend, especially when it comes to that war between Israel and Iran that took center stage over the course of the weekend. On the back of that, our markets were down 1.1%, Nifty closed 1.1% in the red, 22,272 in fact is where we've closed just under that 22,300 mark which we were not able to hold on to for the rest of the day. Sensex also down 1.1%. Nifty Bank is uh, down 1.6%. That's where we've shut shop for the day. And when you look at Nifty Gainers, you only have a handful of names. Uh, ONGC, Hindalco, Maruti, Suzuki, Nestle and Britannia, the only Nifty Gainers that have ended the day in the green. Nifty 50 losers on the other side, you have UPL, Bajaj Finserv, Wipro, ICICI Bank, LND, Adani Ports, Bajaj Finance. That list goes on and on. Even when you take a look at um, the sectoral indices all of these indices have ended the day in the red nifty psu bank being the biggest loser down two percent in trade on the other side you had metals that did not do as badly as compared to the other indices on the back of that news flow that we did see coming in from LME uh, they have uh, banned Russian metals so well uh, gl uh, the global commodities did see some bit of a spike coming in over there from the broader market when you take a look at some stocks you had Kipri Global up 12%, Acid DM did pretty well for itself, CSB Bank, ONGC on the back of that note, Brokerage Note, Thermax, ATG, Granville Note and Excite, Senko Gold also and uh, Ramkrishna Forgings, all of these stocks did pretty well today. On the other side, you had stocks like Gujarat Pipavav, Castrol India, KAC International, NBC, Hindustan Zinc, all of these stocks have ended the day anywhere between 5 and 6% with a cut. But uh, Priyanka, what else were you spotting in today's market session? You just briefly mentioned well, about that Snehi ONGC, which was well, clearly yes. the top gainer and the stellar performer today, uh, uh, majorly because of, the, of course, the geopolitical tension. That is one reason, but the bigger reason was Jeffrey's no to we initiated coverage on ONGC, and the target price is given as 390. The upside they see from here, even surging today nearly 6%, they still see us, uh, there's an upside of 40%, what the note says. And uh, majorly the reforms in gas sector, they should s support the profitability. That's one reason. And of course, the stock is trading at a steeper discount as compared to its long-term average. That's what has been mentioned. The note and uh, we saw the move today. And in fact, not just uh, ONGC, in fact, a couple of energy names the gas stocks also reacted positively today on account of government imposing a Section 11 on electricity and gas-based power plants. That's what one space which uh, was clearly in green today despite the entire other, all sectors were in red today. Uh, one more news which was uh, closely being tracked by traders was uh, on uh, Vodafone Idea ahead of its uh, 18,000 crore FPO. Vodafone Idea today did address media and they uh, spoke about the uh, 5G service rollout. They expect the rollout to be in uh, select pockets in the next six to nine months. And uh, let's not forget the FPO, FPO opens uh, for retail from 18th of April. So these were the key news which were uh, in trade today, which were in focus today. But then let's understand that is the data, what is the data? data suggesting now how do how do we map the markets from here because wix has spiked today nearly 7 to 8 percent milan joins us uh, milan vasudo uh, to talk about the technicals of the market uh, good afternoon uh, milan uh, the kind of call writing we saw nifty bank nifty immediate strikes what do the syndicates it's just a knee-jerk reaction or is this looks like a reversal on the chart what is data indicate what is data indicating Good afternoon. Uh, see, if you see uh, Nifty on the daily chart, due to geopolitical tension, we had a gap down opening. So the downward gap area is in the range of 22,503 to 20, uh, 22,427. Now, this gap area now is going to act as a strong resistance going forward. Now, what are the supports for Nifty on the lower side is it was first support was at the 20 day moving average line, but it has marginally closed close below the 20 day moving average line the 20 day moving average line is somewhere around 22284 and today's close is 22272 now the next support for nifty is somewhere around 22153 which is the 50 day moving average line and now here we have to mark that 50 day moving average line is rising so uh, any close below the 50 day moving average that is we are taking a round figure of 22,000 if we get a close below 22,000 for two consecutive trading sessions then yes you could see that the full uptrend could be derailed but at present we are of the opinion that 22,153 which is the 50-day moving average line 
could be a possible uh, support over here. Now, even on the hourly chart for Nifty, there is a um, there is a good support at current levels, and we are extremely oversold. So there could be a chance that even if we open down with a gap tomorrow, we could see some kind of a bounce back coming in the market. Similarly, for Bank Nifty also, if you see Bank Nifty is now outperforming Nifty slightly because Bank Nifty is holding the 20-day moving average line, which is that uh, 47,585. So as long as that level is been holding, we could see some kind of a bounce back in tomorrow's trading session. But this would be a really a bounce back because uh, all the charts have created a downward gap area where the downward gap area is going to act as a stiff resistance going forward. Well, all right. That sounds a little bit positive when you say that we should be heading into tomorrow's trading session with some sort of optimism. So, well, thanks for that uh, take coming in. But Milian, also tell us that amid a market like this, which are the stocks that you have picked out for our viewers? Where are you seeing value? See, one stock which is uh, Chennai Petro, uh, currently trading at 925 when I saw last week. And uh, one can keep a stop loss of 895 and target would be 985 to 1000. The second stock is Mahindra Mahindra. Uh, currently, it is close at 2052. Keep a minimum stop loss of 2010 uh, and target price of 2190 to 2256 could be possible in a couple of days' time. Right. Thanks very much, uh, Milan, now uh, with the views and the uh, two recommendations that you mentioned here. Thanks very much. Now, let's uh, straight away uh, go to Srishti and understand which are the breakout and the breakdown stocks she's tracked today. Srishti. Uh, so let's quickly uh, take a look at two counters. Firstly, on the uh, on the breakout side, if we look at the stock, these are the million picks that you are watching on the screen. But on the technical front, two counters on the breakdown and the breakdown uh, side that we are tracking in uh, today's trading session. Once it's stock that we have picked for our viewers was Gujarat Gas. If you can see, the stock was actually uh, closed at the day's highest point, and the stock was up by two percent. It was the bullish engulfing pattern that we have spotted on Gujarat gas and the stock also managed to take a bounce exactly from its uh, moving average. I would request my team to put an intraday chart at least for Gujarat gas so that we can spot for our viewers that what a recovery in the Gujarat gas that we have seen in today's trading session. Uh, so this was uh, the first counter uh, that um, uh, that we uh, highlighted on the break outside and um, if we can just have a look at the intraday chart as well of Gujarat gas then All the right. picture will be a little clear but um, on your screen is what you can see viewers is a 2% uptick on Gujarat gas so this was the first counter that we wish to highlight on the breakout side, today's move was also supported uh, on the positive side. Um, build up, a long build up is what we have seen on the derivative front. Moving on to the breakdown stock that we uh, spotted for today. And one of the stocks that was clearly showing breakdown was uh, Bandhan Bank actually. The stock was down about 4% in today's trading session and actually managed to close at the day's lowest point as well. And it was also supported by a short build up on the breakdown side. So these are the two stocks that we wish to highlight on the breakout and the breakdown side. Back to you. All right, well, Shishti, thanks for taking us through that. Let's get a move on then. And time now for, uh, for some opinions on the markets with volatility taking center stage, largely fueled by geopolitical tensions coming to the fore. What are the themes and stocks to watch out for? Here are our views from experts like Amit Sachdeva of HGFC's HSBC Securities. Pardon me. Listen in. India's uh, structural investment case has risen in the last three, four years. Earning growth has been very resilient. One of the things we really, really ignore is that how, uh, how reasonable the inflation expectations have been, which has been a part of problem for India. Inflation trajectory has been much more stable. GDP growth rate stands out. And also even a, in, a, in, a, in a context, the fiscal is also consolidating. Rupee is going to be stable. We don't get that context. So if there is some uh, premium to past, it is not, uh, I would argue that it's not a very large premium. Uh, and, and hence, uh, you may experience some events which impacting India's valuation a little bit. And, and that's the reason those phases are very shallow. So although valuation at some level has its own excesses, but at the market level, I would argue that uh, it, it, it doesn't have as much fluff as, as people would imagine. So, so in that context, small corrections become a good window where if I close return and, and market again rebounds back. So that phase we are in, we are in a volatile market. We have so many unknowns. So we expect phases of consolidation to reappear again and again.
Well, all right then, uh, viewers, it's time to take a quick break on this edition of Your Trades. But wh while we slip into a break, we'll leave you with some interesting graphics about what mutual fund houses have bought and sold in the month of March. Three key, po uh, key um, points over here. Federal Bank has moved from a buy to a sell. Piramal Pharma continues to be a buy and NMDC Steel, NHPC Ashok Leland continues to be a sell. Take a look for yourself. news for those who want to rise with India. Now you can get the full download of business, economics, leaders, interviews, analysis, anecdotes, profits, research, results, revenue, bulls, bears, bonds, markets and more. Your new high seat of business news is here. etnownews.com Your trades are now uh, time for the big story of the day. Vodafone Idea is all set to launch India's largest FPO. The 18,000 crore FPO will open on 18th April. And what are the key objectives of the FPO and what are the analysts uh, penciling in? Uh, Somit joins in with all the details. Let's first understand from him. Somit, over to you. Well, also do remember back in 2019 when they had done this rights issue of 25,000 crore, it was the largest back then. And that time also there were doubts whether the uh, rights issue will actually get subscribed or not. And uh, a promoter had also stepped in uh, at that moment. And uh, currently also there are doubts whether the FPO, which is around 18,000 crore, again the largest FPO uh, that Vodafone Idea has launched, will it get subscribed or not. However, the current statistics or uh, what the plans of the company are uh, look promising at least uh, for from future perspective. Currently, if you see the pricing at which they're launching this FPO is in the range of around 10 to 11 rupees, which is uh, uh, which is at a discount of nearly 16% compared to the current issue price. And uh, post this FPO, the promoter holding is expected to come down to around 38% from the 49%. Now, how are they going to utilize this capital, uh, this fundraise that they're going to do? Around 12,000. 750 crore rupees will be used towards capital expenditure which will augment their 4G network and also start their 5G network. Now lack of 5G network was one of the issues why the company was continuously losing subscribers and lack of 4G network uh, expansion was also one of the reasons. So this uh, gets addressed at least by this fundraise of around uh, 18,000 crore rupees. Apart from that 2,175 crore will be used by the company for some spectrum due. Uh, uh, apart from this, uh, the major reason was, was, as I was mentioning, that their uh, capital expenditure issues might get addressed and that could lead to more subscriber growth. Now, as far as sources, we understand that the company is uh, planning to add nearly 1.5 crore subscribers every year, at least for the next two financial years. So that uh, remains to be seen whether this ex uh, whether ex uh, this plan is executed uh, as per what they uh, as per the internal estimates and if that happens then uh, obviously uh, the company could actually uh, revive going forward thanks very much Swami. so the major part of the proceeds will be used for the growth capex that what the street was expecting also and here uh, looks like that comes in the details also but then let's listen to the management also akshay mundra chief executive officer for vodafone he also spoke about the funding which will help them to grow 5G network and that there is a long runway for the growth he mentioned. Let's listen to him exactly. What did he say? We have 5G spectrum in 17 of our priority circles, which account for 98% of our revenue. And with this round of funding, we will roll out our 5G network also. 4G penetration is still at 66% only. And this figure for China again is 116%. So a lot of penetration to happen on the 4G. And if we look at the overall telecom penetration itself, it is only at 83%. And there's a lot of runway left for this penetration of 83% to grow further. The next driver of ARPU growth would be to say that the tariffs have been below a level where the industry can return its cost of capital. As I mentioned earlier, Indian ARPUs today are the lowest. Uh, in all major countries in the world and one-third of China which is a comparable country 
largely tariff corrections are required and so that the industry can get to a point where it is generating sufficient returns to be able to make future investments. Well, all right, let's get a move on then and shift from one big story of the day. And let's talk about the other sector that was a buzz maker in today's trading session. It did not end the day in the green, but well, compared to other sectors, it did pretty well for itself. And that was the entire metals pack. Now, the London Metal Exchange has banned Russian metal from its system produced on or after the 13th of April. What remains the objective behind this move? And what is the upcoming impact of this on the markets? My colleague Ashesha is here to break it down for us. Ashesha, take it away. Well, yes, metal prices on London Metal Exchange are rising this morning. In fact, aluminium and nickel prices at one point in time were gaining as much as 8 to 9 percent. And that is because London Metal Exchange has gone ahead and banned Russian metal on account of the sanctions that have been imposed by US and UK. And that is the reason we are seeing that surge uh, come in on metal prices on the London Metal Exchange. Three metals that they've banned in particular include aluminium, nickel, as well as copper. And uh, this will apply for production that was done after 13th April and hence there are two group of analysts. One group believes that because of Russian ban and because Russia is a major uh, producer of, of metals, this could lead to undersupply in the market because of which copper aluminium prices could rise. But there's another school of thoughts, thought which believes uh, that because this is applicable only for production that is done after 13th of April, this could lead to oversupply in the market which could probably push prices lower. But at the moment prices are on the rise, aluminium and nickel prices are gaining anywhere between 6 to 8 odd percent. Just to give you a sense of the inventory position on London Metal Exchange, out of the total aluminium inventory as on 31st of uh, March 2024, about 91% of inventory was produced in Russia. For copper, it stands at about 62 odd percent and for nickel, it stands at about 36 odd percent. Important to note that Russia is the third largest producer of aluminium and nickel. So it plays a crucial role in global uh, production of metals. But as of now, yes, metal prices are rising on account of these sanctions that have been imposed uh, by London Metal Exchange and US and UK in particular. And uh, we have Indian stocks, Indian aluminium players, the likes of Hindalco, Vedanda and Nalco in focus on the back of this. This is not a very new phenomenon. We have seen this happening ever since, uh, uh, you know, in uh, I mean, back in 2018, when uh, when uh, this uh, uh, the Russian origin aluminium was banned, and the aluminium and aluminium prices went up 10 percent back in 2018. Now, coming to the current event, yes, definitely Russia, as we know, it's a major supplier of aluminium, and uh, not only aluminium but also uh, nickel and copper. Uh, of Russian origin have also been banned, and therefore this has implication for all the three, uh, all the three uh, metals. We are quite bullish on the on the steel, uh, and not because of China, but because of the fact that in India itself there is uh, there is ample scope of domestic consumption. Now, what we are looking at, what people are looking at, is the capacities coming on board uh, through FY twenty five. However, the capacity, uh, these capacities are staggered and therefore the overall impact can be, uh, but the overall uh, capacity surplus or glut that people are expecting uh, would be far lower. Then the second point here is that if you look at India, yeah, uh, the we have seen for the first time that we had three years of double digit consumption growth and we expect consumption to be around 8.5 to 9 percent in near term and therefore if you see the indian steel consumption by fi32 would be double of what it was in fi23 all right that was a detailed uh, view from uh, uh, analyst also on metal space uh, but then let's go ahead and there were many other stocks which are buzzing in the trade today gaurav has compiled a complete list of the stocks from midcap and in fact a lot many from the broader market gaurav uh, take us through the list right let's begin with senko gold because company not only registered 39 percent yy growth in its revenue but the same stores growth also remained at 19 percent and on the back of this we saw the stock reacted almost up almost by 17 percent in today's trade next let's talk about ismt because company received two orders from ongc worth 340 crore rupees and on the back of this news we saw the stock reacted positively in today's trade 
Next, let's talk about uh, Intellect Design Arena because National Bank of Kuwait has now expanded its partnership to provide full digital transformation for the bank. And if you look at the bank's press, I mean the company's press release, more than 60% of world's top corporate banks are now powered by companies transaction banking products. And on back of this, we saw the stock reacted positively. Next, let's talk about Thermax because company recently opened manufacturing facility in Pune for water and wastewater treatment solution. And if you look at the stock performance also, it reacted positively because investors were happy with this announcement is what it seems. Next, let's talk about RK Forging because company secured a prestigious order from Vande Bharat worth 270 crore rupees. And on back of this news, if you look at stock performance, it was almost up more than 3% in today's trade. And lastly, Let's keep an eye on Reliance Infra also because NCLT has recently disposed of the bankruptcy plea which was filed by SBI and IDBI Bank against Mumbai Metro 1 which is a project where uh, in Reliance Infra owns almost 70% of the 74% of the ownership. And on the back of this news, if you look at the stock performance also, it was up almost more than 1.5%. So all in all, on the back of this news, we will definitely keep an eye on all these companies and see how they perform in the days coming ahead as well. Absolutely, Gaurav. Thanks so much for taking us through that list of all the big buzzers in today's trading session. We'll be watching out for what they do in tomorrow's trading session as well. But earlier in the day, we caught up with the management of Anand Rati Wealth with CEO Rakesh uh, Rawal. And he said that the company will be maintaining inherent growth rate of a 20 to 25% growth rate going ahead. Let's go across and listen into what more he had to say. And this stock was in focus today on the back of its quarter for numbers that it uh, went ahead and reported on Friday. Solid 4% uptick is what we did see coming on the stock today. So, well, let's go across and listen into what the management had to say. It, like we've grown at in the range of 30-ish for the last several, you know, couple of years that we've been in the market. And uh, uh, we projected 2025 and achieved 30. Uh, this year also we project 2025 and uh, hopefully we should uh, meet that and try and, and, and better the expectations. Broadly, I think the industry is uh, very well poised. There is no reason to believe that there should be moderation. I think that uh, the opportunities are massive and uh, every company should endeavor to do uh, very significant growth this year as well. Well, uh, this year's guidance is 72,000 crores, which is a 21 odd percent uh, increase. Yeah, and uh, as I said, that I, uh, you know, I don't see any reason why 20-25% growth in AUM shouldn't happen for many, many years. The trigger for the growth is really new money. All right. Uh, well, uh, that's all in this edition of Your Trade. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned to ET Now. If you like this video, then like, share and subscribe to ET Now.